if I'm being completely honest with you, I haven't always liked being a girl. In fact, for many years and in many different ways, I wanted to be a male. I would beg my parents to wear my brother's clothes. And looking back, I didn't struggle with my identity or I didn't have gender dysphoria. What it was, was a deep longing to have what males had. I believe that in order to be of importance and to gain the respect of others around me, I needed to have more masculine traits. I viewed women as weak and I wanted to be strong. The modern feminist movement today, I, in my opinion, believe is a lot to blame for this. Let me explain. Women all around the world, especially in the US today, scream equality, woman power. And it wouldn't be uncommon today to hear a modern day feminist say something along the lines of that they are a strong woman and they don't need a man in their lives. And they fight to get more women in leading Hollywood roles. All while these characters in these movies go on to have a very masculine persona. They modern day feminists are fighting for the right to not have to live for anybody else as a young girl i grew up believing that i had to go to college one day to make something of myself and to do that i needed to go on to pursue a career and so i did i went to school to become an ent finally an honorable position that would be revered by my friends and family and those around me strangers all while i suppressed parts of myself that i thought were weak all while i suppressed my womanhood. I met my husband when we were both 19. We got married at 21 and two months later, we were pregnant with our first son. And it wasn't until my baby boy was in my arms that I realized that I have been lied to. And not only me, so many young girls. I need a sip of coffee for this conversation. When I held my baby in my arms, a part of me came to life that day. The suppressed part of me, the woman part of me, the God designed and God given parts of me. It bursted out of me that day. And I experienced for the first time in my life, a profound pride in my femininity. I've learned that I'm not only strong if my strength looks like a man's, but I am strong as a woman and in my more feminine God given character traits learn that I'm not just important if I have a career and, and a successful job and that I am not only respected by others if I am showing more masculine traits. Now this is the whole point I'm trying to get across in this video today. The world tells women these things. Modern feminism tells girls these things. The strength it takes for a woman to serve her family and give up parts of herself to bring new life into the world is a strength that only belongs to women and is a strength that should be praised. I am adored and loved sacrificially by my husband who has watched me grow into a woman and who has watched me live selflessly for him and for our kids. Now I'm not saying you need to have a baby or necessarily get married in order to embrace your femininity. I think it should happen a lot sooner than it happened for me. I think it would have saved me a lot of headaches if I was being told by you know, family people that loved me, teachers, that I don't have to grow up to be like a man. What I am trying to say though, is that a strong woman today in our culture is being viewed as a woman that looks a lot like a man and doing the roles of a man. And what if we started to embrace women as women and our God given traits and characteristics that are really unique to women? What if instead of putting women in these leader roles that are basically just man roles that are just replaced with a woman's face, what if these characters actually portrayed womanly, more feminine characteristics? And what if it was that that made him strong instead of being strong like a man is strong? I'm not saying women can't be physically strong and I'm not saying men can't be nurturing. But what I am saying that there are certain characteristics that the world is trying to blur and is trying to make very fluid when I think God has a certain design in the way he's made his creation. And instead of fighting that design, learning to embrace the design because what God has made is good and he has an order and design in which we should live our lives in the way that men should live their lives. So what does it look like to embrace your femininity and how did I personally in my life started to embrace it practically realistically? One thing as a wife was I started following my husband more instead of trying to lead him. Now I know I probably will get a lot of comments on this video and it's okay if you disagree with me, but let me explain a little bit more. When we first got married, my husband and I, I remember walking away hand in hand while we were about to take our you know, wedding photos and it was like a wave that went over me of comfort knowing so instantly that I was under him now, that he now is called to provide for me and to take care of me. 
and it felt very tangible in that moment and I have told my husband that it really felt almost like this instant okay you are my protector now I don't get me wrong I have an amazing father who has protected me and has watched over me and provided for me but I do think I had this like again this wanting to be like a man and wanting to provide for myself and thinking that if I could be incredibly independent that it made me more strong and people would respect me more and so there was this always wanting to provide for myself and the comfort it brought me to be married and to feel like I can just breathe and rest and know that my husband is taking care of me and that you know is kind of the burden that is on him now he is the one that leads our family and takes on the burden sometimes of provision and even if that means working 50 hours a week, he has taken that role in my life as my husband to provide for me and provide for my kids. And it is extremely comforting. And I think knowing that my husband is that for us in our lives and in our family has given me space to breathe. It's And it's given me now the ability and the time, the freed up time to be a better woman and to also serve him in the way that he is serving me. It's become extremely trendy to be a traditional wife, a trad wife, and there's videos upon videos of women with big bows in their hair. Something that could be really good, for example, like a traditional wife can become trendy and it can become just for clicks. And it's very interesting because again, it's a good movement to have more traditional family roles, I think in my opinion, but but it's more than just a trend. Again, it's, it's a God-given design and layout he has given us in, in scripture and the Bible for us to live by. And as a wife who is being taken care of by my husband and who provides for us so well, I am able now to, to yeah, be a traditional wife, to be home, to be a homemaker. And it's given me so much joy and it's given me just a new purpose. Before becoming a wife and a mom, I always was searching and trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. And then I got married and it was like, oh no, this is what I'm doing with my life. And this is what I want to do with my life. And there's nothing more fulfilling, even as an EMT, which I thought would be the most fulfilling thing, going out to be a paramedic. And it is fulfilling. I'm not trying to you know, downgrade the importance of that job because it's incredibly important. But being a wife and a, being a mom and getting to serve my family every day and take care of my home, that oh. for me is what gives me the motivation to want to do things like YouTube and make videos and pursue other passions. I, you know, love making music and singing. It's a great passion of mine. I'm not saying I just threw all my passions out the water. Being a mom and, and being a wife gives me a drive to want to pursue those things so that it could bless, further bless my family. I have four boys and another reason I feel like I've started to embrace my femininity and wear more dresses and you know cook more and want to be better at cleaning my house and things like that is a huge reason is because I'm trying to show my boys too what to look for in a wife one day. I would love them to have a wife that knows how to cook them good food and knows how to take care of the home and a wife that takes care of her body. When I put a dress on my boys always love it it always like for some reason they always notice it they'll always tug on my dress and I feel like it's a comfort thing something about just dressing very feminine like that also feels natural being a man and being a woman are both amazing learning more and more what it looks like what it means to be a godly woman and just resting in the simplicity of what it is instead of again just continually trying to reach for titles and positions that are maybe just outside of my calling in life for me has been so fulfilling this is not to bash women who if you have careers or if you don't have a family this is not to um attack anybody but this is to encourage those who may feel just like the urge and the push to want to be more masculine and to feel as if that's the end goal for women who have beautiful callings on their life we get the privilege to nurture to live life with integrity and virtue to hopefully be filled with wisdom and pour out wisdom upon others upon our kids upon younger women being a godly woman is also marked by strength and hard work you see that in Proverbs 31, you see that in scripture. Being a godly woman means being faithful, being pure and modest, being hospitable to those around you, fearing the Lord above anything else and everyone else. These are the traits and the characteristics that I want to instill in me. And I wanna have these life-giving, soul-giving habits to pass on to my kids and to future generations. And these characteristics are not necessarily just for women. You see these traits in men as well. But we are uniquely designed by God to 
live a life glorifying to God. And it's a beautiful design. And I, for one, am tired of rebelling against it. And I want to embrace it and continue to grow as the woman God has called me to be. As my husband grows as the man he has called him to be. As my boys hopefully grow up to be men that God has called them to be. We are all equal with different roles. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, perfect design. I'm thankful to be a woman and if you are a woman watching this, I hope you're only encouraged leaving this space and leaving this video. Biblical femininity is beautiful and should not be suppressed. And we shouldn't teach young girls to suppress it either. God has made you, whether you are a man or a woman, he has made you fearfully and wonderfully for his glory. And I pray that you are encouraged in this video. I am always incredibly honored when I get any views on my videos. And so thank you for watching if you've made it this far. I do plan on making more homemaking videos. I genuinely love being a homemaker and a stay home mom. So all that to say, I wanna start making videos of me, an average homemaker, pursuing homemaking and hey, we're all just learning together, right? So from a sister in Christ to another sister in Christ, keep on going and may God get the glory. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. Okay, bye.